When he turned to the engine and he turned back, the guy was holding a gun. <laughs> Crocodile meat. Crocodile meat. Yeah. This is the number one producer of Honda motorbikes in the world. Oh, this is a piranha. Yeah. And he ate the piranha? Yep. Before it ate you. <laughs> really gorgeous. There's a huge beach here. The biggest yeah. river in the world lives up to its. Oh! Ding, ding, ding. Nice. Mercy! <laughs> Imagina esse ano se esse hit pega. Mas olha agora o canalha chegou. Following day, piranha. Do you wanna die? Hey guys, this is Diego again. So that is the river Amazon. We've flown here from Rio de Janeiro and we've arrived in Manaus, which this is basically the hub of the Amazon. It's the main city of the Amazon rainforest. Traders from all around the rainforest, indigenous people, other local people, they come here, they sell their goods in the market. The fish from the Amazon river, vegetables and fruits like as the famous acai that you see in all the, the trendy cafes and things around the world. Majority of it comes from the Amazon. So today we're gonna go into the city. We're gonna explore Explore. we're gonna meet the people. Also a huge center of Brazil's industrial scene is here so this huge factory is gonna check that out. We're gonna to go to lower class areas of the city, we're gonna to go to the expensive parts that we're gonna start, we're gonna head down to the Amazon River. Lifelong dream to go there so let's head into it. Just before we go I just want to mention if you think that I'm staying in like a, a five-star hotel, this hotel is actually costing like $25 for two people for a twin room. So we've driven down to the Amazon here and we've come to this local market. There's people with fish, there's guys like carrying pigs on their backs, getting pigs off boats so they must bring the pigs in from surrounding villages, obviously the fish, and they come down here and sell it to the people of the city of two million people, the hub of the Amazon. So we might go down into the market and see where some of these people have come from and, and their daily life. So let's go meet some of these people. It's a pretty unique uh, situation here. So you can see it's super action-packed here, so much going on. Come down and meet a, a local farmer called uh, Alexandre. He's just loaded off like five or six pigs from his boat. So I'm here with uh, Diego again. Would you mind asking like where he's come from? We saw him unloading the pigs, so can he just walk us through his like morning routine today? He unloaded a bigger boat that came from a river, downstream of Amazon River, like two days from here. Full of pigs. Full of pigs. So he's like a distributor. He is kind of distributing from the big boat. It's not a matter of liking or not. It's the only thing he, he can do. It's the only thing that pays off and stuff. So it's not a matter of choice. Regatta. From nearby or from far away? Nearby. He said it's really good, it's really good meat, but it's even better the the eggs. Caviar. The caviar, yeah. Todo mundo popular, todo mundo gosta, todo mundo compra, todo mundo leva. Everyone buys it, everyone loves it, everyone eats it. Live in Manaus or in another village or? And now he's living in Manaus, so he's not fishing anymore, he's just distributing. So he bought this fish today and he's just selling it because to go fish, he needs three days to stay there in the river waiting for the fish and everything and he doesn't have that time anymore. Is life better here in the Amazon or would he prefer to live in a different part of Brazil? He cannot imagine a better place to live than here 
He's been living here for the past 40 years. Obrigado. Ok. Obrigado. É rocha, Raimundo! Oi, amigo, 10 An absolute hive of activity. So I just picked up a coconut for like 70 cents and a hat for about $3 because uh, we're about to jump on a boat across the Amazon. We're gonna go to a local man's house that we've met and obviously I wasn't gonna go into the jungle without a camouflage hat. So let's jump on the boat and we're gonna meet Jose. Seems like a really cool guy. He uh, had some interesting stories. He was completely robbed of his boat and thrown off in the middle of the Amazon and the, the thieves took his boat, he almost drowned, but uh, luckily he's alive, so let's go hear his story. Yeah. So we're just pulling up to the petrol station to uh, fuel up here. <laughs> so we've just taken like an hour boat trip from the Manaus city there through the uh, Amazon. It's incredible to be here for the first time. Obviously the biggest river in the world and uh, it lives up to its... <laughs> lives up to its huge reputation. This is our boat driver Jose Nias' house and he's lived here for 40 years. Yeah. He fishes out of the window. Wow. Do they just live off like they've got the rice and things here, but That's mainly it. mainly fish? And when they want to like have something different and stuff, they go to the city and buy chicken. So it is possible to have plantations here. He had watermelon, but then the water took it all. Most of the times he go to Manaus and he buys it there. What's uh, cooking at the moment? Yeah, frango, galinha, chicken, chicken feet. Yeah. Fish. Jacaré. Jacaré. Uh, crocodile meat. Crocodile meat. Yeah. Are there many crocodiles uh, around here? A lot of crocodiles. Do they attack humans? These are scars from crocodiles. Three meters eighty jacaré. Almost three meters long. Are oh, you catching fish right now? This is the piranha. Oh, this is a piranha. Yeah. They look a lot. I thought they were like this big. I think they're a different size. This is a baby. You hang meat down and then yeah. they try to eat it. Exactly. And do you eat the piranha? Yep. Before it eats you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> if you like fall in a water and a swarm of piranhas mm -hmm. come, they can like eat you eat all. Eat you all. Right. Exactly. We even have an expression in, in Portuguese, piranha cow or cattle. There is the first cow that goes in front. Right. So the piranhas eat it first and then you can cross the river with all the, the other cows. So this is the toilet. And how does the sewage work? Does it just go straight into the, it goes straight in the into Amazon? The yeah, uh -hu. To the Amazon. No, muito grande. <laughs> Really good actually. Really? Mm -hmm. It tastes like a kind of fish, a big, a big fish from the Amazon River. It's really still, the meat. Lean. Lean. Yeah. Yeah. How does the electricity work here? It was a program from the federal government to give light to every, every single Brazilian. They don't pay for it. It's just free electricity coming to every village, every, every place. Is the dog allowed to eat the meat? 
<laughs> I go todo dia trabalhar em Manaus e venho à tarde. He transports people between the, among the villages. He was robbed, right? Like and thrown out in, into the river and almost drowned. Foi lá da prainha, duas horas e meia de viagem. A guy asked him about a ride, like a two hours and a half ride. After one hour and a half, the guy said, oh, it's nearby here. Stop the boat over there. And he, when he was stopping the boat, he turned to the engine and he turned back. The guy was holding a gun against his head and said, don't try anything or I will kill you. The guy told him to leave the boat. Uh, he was left on the water. He got to the, to the land. He kneed and started praying. Then he started trying to call people. He couldn't find, like, reception wasn't good. Well, after six or seven hours, the police boat came and found him. Is that frequent, these kind of occurrences, or is that just like a, a rarity? It's quite frequent. It happened another time with him, but he was smart. There were two guys and they were trying to deviate his attention and trying to show him around. So he, he would turn his head and the guys would get the gun. He didn't. He kept like riding the boat real fast and doing sharp corners and he left the guys in a place. The guys didn't want to leave the boat and he was like, no, you guys have to leave now and stuff. So nothing happened to him. But next day, another guy got the same two guys from the place he dropped them. And the guy said exactly the same thing. Oh, this area here looks like something. And the guy looked around and got robbed. They, they stole the boat from him. For me, walking around, I felt reasonably safe in Manaus, but would Jose view it as a dangerous place, generally? Okay, I'll put it here. He was stabbed. Uh, stabbed. Yeah. So he said it's quite dangerous. Walking around with a camera like this, you would get robbed. Uh, for sure, that's what he said. For and sure? I, yeah. But we were walking around this morning. Does he think it's going to happen if we continue to walk around with this camera? Yeah, but like if we're not in a place full of people, but if we go back in streets. back streets, that area we were today, the place where we got the boat, the fish market. A guy was actually going to stab someone else and thought he was this someone else and stabbed him in the back. What are the best parts about living here, if that's, you know, the danger is obviously horrible, but what do you like the most? <laughs> here is a lot more quiet, calmer, countryside, so there are no robberies here. It's a good, chilled life. It's not like Manaus. So these houses are actually floating. Uh, the ones over here, you can see in the distance, they're on stilts, but that should show the fluctuation of the, the Amazon here. And they have to replace the uh, wood every five years because it rots. Um, but it's just on these huge bits of wood here, these huge tree trunks. That's what keeps the house afloat. And uh, they swap them out from time to time. So you can imagine all these kind of settlements, we went past many settlements similar to this. And then they go and take their fish or their produce and they sell it, you know, Manaus there. We're going to be exploring more of that later, but that's definitely the hub where a lot of business is conducted so people can live their lives out here. And it is so peaceful and beautiful out here. We got him. So we drove through some smaller side rivers, uh, but we've come back onto the, the main Amazon here and it's a very interesting point because this is where two huge rivers meet. It's actually two different colors. You can see on the, the left, a more light brown color, and then this color, it's more, more of a black. Really quite a profound uh, meeting of rivers. Apparently they blend together for, I think, 14 kilometers before they, you know, you can't see the difference. And so we've made it back to land and you can see the huge port that's the biggest port on the amazon now we're going to go and check out the industrial side of the city oh guys you... this is diego from brazil again we got friendship bracelets but nick's refusing to wear them uh, but i got mine i remember this 
Nick's not a good friend. Not a good friend. So we've driven about half an hour. This is like one of the main industrial hubs of the entire world, not just Brazil. Diego was telling me that this is the number one producer of Honda motorbikes in the world, which is pretty insane. Across here we have LG. What are some other big brands that people would know? Coca-Cola is here, PepsiCo is here, InBev, number one beer producer. Owns Budweiser, Bex and Stella. Samsung is also here. Samsung, BMW? BMW for motorcycles. So this is a free trade zone. Uh, during the late 60s, beginning of the 70s, the government created this free trade zone. Quite interesting because we're like right bang in the center of the Amazon. Exactly. When you think of the Amazon, we've seen documentaries and everything. Uh, David Attenborough talking about anacondas, beautiful animals and things, but you would never expect this huge city of like two million people exactly. producing all this. So we've driven down to this middle upper class area of the city. Really gorgeous. There's a huge beach here. You can see the big condominium buildings there. And we drove over this bridge here. And that connects Manaus with the rest of Brazil. Before that bridge was built, they had, you know, car ferries and things. Just what really has stood out to me in this city is the, and I'm sure you've seen it as well, is the contrast. You know, you've got the downtown area where our hotel is. Then you've got the market and things where a lot of people make their money. Then you've got out in the Amazon rainforest, went to Jose's family, is super relaxed. It's really nice out there. And then you come back into this industrial old style, huge factories which you know obviously supplies a lot of jobs for the local people but it, it is quite interesting to see that right these mega factories some of the biggest factories of certain products of the world appliances motorbikes in the middle of you know the lungs of the earth on the biggest river in the world i knew that brazil had big industry but for it to be here and then also you know there are like lots of safe areas like here i don't really feel in any danger whatsoever but as jose was saying you got to be very careful and he's been stabbed in the back not metaphorically literally had his boat stopped and held at gunpoint and you know everybody's got these stories uh, Diego he's been held at gunpoint and there is that constant theme of danger here and that's not exaggerating I'm sure anybody who lives here would tell you the same but there are of course these amazingly beautiful areas and and you know going out into the Amazon very safe out there in, in these little settlements just these big uh, metropolis areas where you get that thriving crime but I haven't had any bad experiences so far on my trip to Brazil in terms of, of crime or anything I've been to some pretty intense areas as you've seen that's all I can comment on obviously this stuff's happening but me personally so far fingers crossed I haven't experienced it I just want to take a quick second out and say thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video Skillshare is an online learning community with like so many like thousands and thousands of classes filmmaking art even learning languages like it, it covers all spectrums a class that I specifically want to talk about today is video on a budget by Christopher Rhodes I think this is really great for things like travel vlogging it can actually work to your benefit to be on a budget sometimes when you get the shot in the moment you don't need to have the best gear in the world premium membership costs less than ten dollars a month and the first 1,000 of you that click the link below will get a free trial of the premium membership to explore your creativity. I think it's a great sponsor because it offers you guys the tools to learn something new. Okay, back to the video. We're gonna try and make our way to the Venezuelan border. I've been to Venezuela and there's obviously a lot of uh, migrants and refugees coming through. Show a bit of the story on the other side of the fence. There are lots of Venezuelans in this city as well. We've seen them begging and things on the street. It's a big part of, especially the northern area, is the Venezuelan refugees. It's gonna be quite brutal getting up there. We're still figuring it out, but that'll be the next video. Hope you enjoy that. Hope you're enjoying these Brazil videos. It's an incredible country in so many ways and the people are so great. And especially how they interact with each other. It's like everybody's friends, it's really beautiful. There's that, that mutual respect between the countrymen and uh, the countrywomen. It's beautiful, it really is. So I'm gonna leave you here on the Amazon. I'll see you in the next video from Brazil here. Thank you so much for watching and in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening and good night. My future is now.